All right then gang, so in the last video we created two more cloud functions and they were invoked based on an authentication trigger, either creating a user or deleting a user. Now that was fine, but it did give us these errors, function returned undefined, expected promise or value. And that's because we're not actually returning a value and normally we need to return a value or promise for background trigger functions. And I've created these comments just to remind us to do that in these functions. So eventually we will do that and we will get rid of those errors. But also I wanna do a bit of extra work inside these cloud functions because at the minute all they're doing is logging this stuff to the console and that's kind of pointless what I actually want to do inside this function where a new user is created is create a record for that user in the Firestore database and then inside that collection a user's collection inside that database we can have a record for this user which stores additional information for that user because Firebase auth doesn't store additional information about users. It only stores the bare essentials, their email, their password, etc. But what if I want to store, I don't know, a list of hobbies for a user or a biography or something else? Then I need to store that in the database. So that's what we're going to do. Create a new database record inside a user's collection for every user that is created. So First of all, let me get rid of this console log. We don't need that anymore. And I'll do the same thing down here. And by the way, we'll do the opposite right here. We'll delete the record for the user when they are deleted themselves. Now, if we want to interact with the Firestore database inside our cloud functions, we need to require something at the top. And that is the admin SDK. And the admin SDK allows us basically to interact with the Firestore and other things. So I'm going to say const admin is equal to require and inside Firebase hyphen admin. Okay, so now we have that. We need to say admin dot initialize app like so. And that initializes the app and allows us to do all of this communication directly from this admin. Okay, so what I'm going to say down here is admin dot Firestore, which we have access to. And by the way, if you're unfamiliar with Firestore, I would recommend in checking out my Firestore tutorial series, first of all, because I'm not going to go into great depth about how everything works with Firestore. I would expect you to know the basics already. So we're accessing the Firestore right here. Then we want to access a specific collection inside that Firestore, and that collection is going to be users. Now, you might be thinking, well, we've not created a users collection yet. We don't have any collections in the Firestore yet, but it doesn't matter because when we come to grab a collection and a document inside that collection, if the collection doesn't already exist, Firebase will create it for us, which is nice. So inside that users collection, I want to get a document reference and I'm going to pass in the UID of the user that just signed up. So if I say user.uid, it's going to look for a document that has this ID. OK, now at the minute that document doesn't exist. But again, that doesn't matter if it doesn't exist, then it's going to create it for us. So it will create a document with the UID of the user. And that way, our user is going to have the same UID as the user record. So it's kind of linking Firebase auth and our Firestore record for that user together. So we're creating this document with this UID and then we want to set some values of that document. So we use the set method to do that and we pass in an object and we set different key value pairs. So say, for example, I want to store the email. I don't have to because that's being stored on Firebase Auth, but just to make up some values, let's do it because we have access to that on the user object that we get right here. So I can take that user, access the email property, and that is going to store that now in the email property of this document inside the Firestore collection of users inside this document. So that's the first property. Next, I'm going to create a new property and that's called upvoted on and that will be an empty array to begin with. Now, what is this property all about? Well, eventually, if we take a look at the project, you can see right here we have arrows and I can upvote different tutorials. Now, this array right here is going to keep track of which tutorials this particular user has upvoted. 
So this information, this is not stored on Firebase authentication. We can't do that. We can store it in a Firestore document for that user, and that's what we're doing. So to begin with, it's going to be empty, but later on in the series, as we click on those arrows to upvote, it's going to add the different requests that this user has upvoted on and keep track of those. Okay, so there we go. That's done. That's all we wanted to do in here. We've created now a user record for this user. Now, remember, for background triggers, you must return a value or a promise. So this right here, well, this is asynchronous and it returns a promise. So all I have to do is place the return keyword explicitly before that, and it's now going to return the promise returned by this action. Make sense? Cool. So let's do the same thing down here. I'm going to delete that spare line and paste this in. But now I don't want to set this. Instead, I want to delete this document. So what I'm going to do is instead of returning right here, I'm going to say const and then I'm going to say the document is equal to admin.firestore.collection.doc. We still want the document of the current user that's been deleted. And instead of set, we'll get rid of that. We want to delete it. So we've stored a reference to that document now inside doc. And all I have to do is return doc and then use a method on this called delete. That goes out, it deletes it from the Firestore database and it returns a promise. Therefore, we can explicitly return that right here. And this now should all work. So if I save this, I'm going to deploy those and then we'll test them out. Now, while that's happening, I'm actually going to go over here to our authentication tab and I'm going to delete the current user so we can start from a blank slate so that now in the future, when we create a user, we create a record for them. And then when we delete a user, we delete that record. So we're starting from a blank slate now. And let's see if this has deployed successfully. It looks like it has done, but let's go to our functions over here, the dashboard. And I'm just going to refresh just to make sure they're both still there. OK, cool. And now the first thing I'll do is go and create a user from the front end. So let me refresh over here and um, we shouldn't be logged in anymore, but let's sign out anyway. So let's register a new user and this user is going to be shown at the net. Oops, let me spell this correctly. The net ninja .uk, and the password is going to be test one, two, three. So register. Make sure it works on the front end first of all. It did. And then if we go over to Firebase, we need to go to the database. But let me just refresh over here to make sure we have that user as well created in Firebase authentication. OK, we have two. I forgot to delete that one in the last tutorial. I'll do that in a second. But now first, let me go to the Firestore. And we can see now we have a user's collection. It created that for us. And we should have a single document inside here, which represents that user that just signed up, that just registered. And we can see there's the email. And this is the upvoted on array, which is empty at the minute. So it created that user record for us. And look at this. This ID right here, it starts in IS and ends in B2. This should be the same as the ID that... Firebase auth created for us. So there's kind of like a synergy between those two. They're linked up. And down here we have this one, Peach. Now I am going to delete that because we don't actually have a record for her. So delete account. It's probably going to try to delete that document over here, which corresponds to that account, but it doesn't exist. So it's not going to be able to do that. But now if I go ahead and delete this user, so let me go back over here. Let me delete this user like so. It should then go ahead and try to delete this, which it does as well. So now this is all in sync. Whenever we create a new user, it creates a document for us inside the user's collection for that user. And whenever we delete that user, it deletes that document for us as well. To end, let me just create that user one more time. So we have something to work with in future tutorials. So Sean at the net ninja.co.uk and test one, two, three, register. And hopefully now we should get that document back over here. Yes, we do. So there we go, Sean at the Net Ninja. And if we go to the Auth tab, refresh just to make sure we have that one single user. Yep, there we go. Awesome. All working. So there's a good example of why we'd use authentication triggers 
in our Firebase projects. In the next video, we're gonna move on and we're going to create a function to handle the adding of new requests.